here, I think. I learned something this morning, and that is this wood that I thought was poplar here um, is actually red oak. Um, the uh, fellow from the log yard said he was going to have my other order of oak in pretty soon, but he looked over at my stack and he said, but you still got some of that red oak left. And I said, oh, I thought that was poplar. <laughs> So I don't know my woods and uh, we, we had a little miscommunication. I thought he had said he was bringing me poplar. So that means we have some wood we can go ahead and use to get started on some of our flooring. So we're gonna kind of pick through it and try to load up some of the good stuff and head up there and try to get some stuff done today. Yeah, like not the not non bowed, but you've already Yeah, got some well, bowed. some of the ones that are bowed though, we can like nail them and then pull them straight. So it won't matter if they're not, as long as they're not real bad. So we are set up here today because we've got a little bit of time to work. We've got some floorboards, uh, red oak that we're going to put in. But first, we had some suggestions to put in blocking between the floor joists. And of course, several people were mentioning we needed to use joist hangers. And I'm just going to tell you flat out, I went to Lowe's to buy joist hangers and they were over two bucks a piece. And I thought, man, that's a couple hundred dollars just for joist hangers. So what my plan is in, is instead to find some of these solid rough cut boards and i'm going to run them along underneath the joist as kind of a ledge for the joist to sit on kind of serving as a joist hanger but saving me a couple hundred bucks so that's the route we're going to go so we're going to do that blocking and put in those joist blocks first and then we'll get to work on our floor setup we've got our geniverse generator set up here with the solar panels charging and, and I'm letting it race. Yeah. Caden, Caden is obsessed with watching how the solar panels generate Ooh. wattage. And when the clouds come out, then yes. it, it drops down. No. Like right now, it's 195 watts of charging because there's clouds above us. But when the sun comes out bright, it goes up to 300 and so on. Um, it's almost noon, and I'm just about ready to lay the panels flat because the sun's just about straight overhead. But, uh, yeah. We're getting some charge on just because we had a sunny day and we were out here we decided uh, the battery we've used it down to 66 percent it says so we decided to throw the panels on it just let it charge while we're working but, up here today but before i was it's a big in here I think we found its limit, that's for sure. Because we've got, uh, we've got inch and three quarter red oak here that we're ripping and uh, it'll do it. But I had to hook directly to the Geniverse unit and not run it through an extension cord. Um, I had to make sure I didn't get it pinched to keep from kicking it out. So these are gonna be our uh, joist hangers. We're gonna nail these onto the tube at the ends underneath the joist down through there or actually probably use some exterior screws and put them on and that'll kind of be the extra support there and we've got a few more we'll have to cut too but we'll get there uh, it is going to stink and rain again There you go. Put the one right there. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know it's gonna rain again. Are you kidding me? Look at look at the sky. It's gonna rain again. <laughs> Every time, man. 
There you go, so you're in the meat of the wood. This, this board's got a bad spot, but it's uh, plenty strong enough for what we're doing. All right, hand me that so I can get my side here real quick. All right, here you go. Finish these last ones and I'll start getting the next boards ready. Chicken and uh, chicken, and turkey, and then he says, "Good taste, good taste." Well, unfortunately, I see raindrops in the pond, which means I need to put my power supply away. I'm sure it's fine, but I don't really want to get it just pouring rain on. So don't want to take the risk. I'm going to set it in the truck, pick up a couple tools every single time we come up here to work. And to the only shelter we have, the outhouse, the permapotty. The permapotty. After you. So far, we've spent quite a bit more time in here than I expected to. Yeah, probably even more than working. <laughs> Just about. What we're gonna do, um, had some suggestions for putting down vapor barrier and things like that, but the underside of this cabin is gonna stay wide open. So I'm not closing all that in, so I really don't see a need for vapor barrier. Um, I did consider like a weed barrier fabric or something like that, but at the same time, where it's not really gonna get much sun, it's not, I don't- Uh, I don't... Dad, did you just say where it's not gonna get much sun? Yeah. Underneath the cabin, how's, it, how's the sun oh. gonna shine underneath the cabin? Yeah, I mean, there'll be a little bit of sun get underneath the front porch here, but uh, back on in there, it's of course gonna be blocked out anyway. So um, probably not gonna put anything under it, but what I am going to do to kind of seal it up because we're using plank boards as our flooring and we're even extending the plank boards like we're gonna deck this whole area and then part of it's gonna be the porch, part of it's gonna be the cabin. And we're decking it with these red oak boards, which will have spaces in between them. So we've got like black roofing paper, tar paper, that we're gonna roll out on this first to kind of put a, uh, a windbreak, vapor barrier, whatever you wanna call it, um, so that those uh, spaces between the boards won't have airflow blowing up through them and kind of seal it up that way. So that's our plan for that. I don't think we're gonna get quite, I was hoping we'd get some of that rolled out today and stapled on, but I don't think we're gonna get quite that far, but that's okay. We're making pretty good progress. Now, I'll tell you something that somebody reminded me of, and I knew this, but I had forgotten because I already had regular framing nails on hand, and I started framing up these joists with just regular framing nails. And in treated lumber, those will rust out pretty quickly. So you gotta use hot dip galvanized nails. And somebody jumped in the comments and mentioned that. I don't know if they could tell by what I was shooting or if they just decided to offer that piece of advice. But anyway, I'm glad they did because I did put exterior screws in every joist, but I like to frame with nails for the most part. And uh, yeah, I don't want them rusting out and something failing and the floor falling through. So we went and we picked us up a box of, quit. <laughs> we picked us up a box of hot dip galvanized nails in, and we actually went back through and we put some of these in the joists and in the stringers and all that. So back on track. That's part of why I like when people jump in the comments and, yeah, you know, 
to say thanks to whoever did that. Yeah, absolutely. But now, here's the thing. You know, sometimes you'll have people kind of be mean in the con comments and condescending like, like, how stupid you are. And that may be true, but it's also not necessary. I can take suggestions and I enjoy them and I appreciate them, but there's, there's no need to be rude. Just share what you have to say. And I appreciate it when you do. Now, the reason I did it that way is because I figured out that when it starts to pinch towards the end, it ends up kicking the breaker on the Geniverse because if we're running it right at max capacity. But if I go to the other end, spread those boards out, I mean, we're talking red oak, inch and three quarter thick boards that we're ripping here. So putting the saw to work for sure. And if I can help it out by keeping it from pinching the blade, then we made the entire cut without kicking a breaker. Works good. So getting the job done up here with no other electricity, just solar power. All right. Hey, you're making it look bad. Your mom's making it bad. Sometimes I think what's wrong with you? Kinda. It might not look like it, but we accomplished quite a bit today. We did basically going through the suggestions that were in the comments from the last video. And some of, the th some of these things I kind of intended to do anyway, like putting the board underneath the joist. That was my plan instead of spending the money on joist hangers. But the blocking is something that really I never even thought about. And it made the joist way more stable. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure it's gonna make the whole cabin structure a whole lot more stable. So I appreciate those suggestions. Those are, uh, are handy. And look, we may not do everything that you suggest. Some of the things we don't do are because we either don't know how or we can't afford it. But I like to hear the suggestions and kind of learn things along the way. So it works out pretty good. Caden, what do you think? What's, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. Anything about you want? About the cabin. Yeah. It's turning out. It is. It's turning out. And we were excited to find out that the lumber that we had left over is red oak because that meant we could go ahead and get started. But they're going to have us a whole another bundle of red of is it white, white oak. I think white oak. Yeah. Um, coming up a couple days. So we got the trailer Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. That's a couple days. Yeah. So we got okay. the trailer cleaned off and we're going to take it back down so it's ready for the next load to be loaded on it. So we've got a lot of tools to pick up. I'm gonna take you up here and show you the blocking and stuff that we did. Now, of course, we just used the uh, red oak, um, basically two by fours, and uh, we put those underneath the floor joists as hangers. Hmm. And Caden did a good job of running all the screws in, getting those all set for also us. Also getting mama flour. And here's our blocking. I had a couple of two by sixes left over, and so I used those for that side. And then I just cut up some red oak and put in on this side. And I don't exactly know the proper technique for blocking, but what I did was just kind of eyeballed the center of the joist, and then I just staggered them so that I could nail each one easily along the way. It definitely tied everything together, so pretty excited about that. And we are about ready to get going on this floor. I've got two old rolls of black tar paper up here on the wood pile that's ready to roll out. So. We'll start with that here in the next couple of days, get it stapled on there, and then we'll start putting floorboards on. 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, seeing us working on the cabin. We appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good day.